point of the hook through the small hole. I'm going to use 12 aught thread. I like that a lot. You could also use 8 aught or 6 aught. When you get down into smaller pheasant tails, which are very common, 16, 18s, and 20s, uh, you'll want the thin thread. It's really nice to work with. Wrap a little thread base down there. Wrap down to the bend of the hook. Main ingredient in a pheasant tail is pheasant tail. So this one's a nice big center tail uh, from a rooster. Uh, I'm going to grab the fibers, the longest fibers I can for this tail part. I'm going to grab about six or eight or so uh, for this size fly. I'm going to pull it, pull the uh, fibers perpendicular uh, from the stem and grab them in the middle there real tight, rip them off. And if you pull, if you have them perpendicular to the stem, the tips are even, and that's what we're after. We're after those even tips. So now the measurement's about a half a shank length long. So I make the measurement, move it back to the thread and the bend of the hook there. Do a little pinch wrap. Do about two or three of those. Staying on in place, I'm going to wrap a few times a little bit forward of where the bend is just so I get about that much tied down. Then I'm going to jump forward with my thread, jump in front of the butt ends of the pheasant tail. <clears throat> I'm going to use uh, copper wire. This one's small copper wire. This one happens to be ultra wire. Uh, if you're going down to 18s and such, uh, then you might want to use the extra small ultra wire. This one's red. You can certainly use copper, which is the more traditional color. Uh, the reason I'm using red is because that's what I have handy. And it looks good. I think it looks good on a pheasant tail. So I'm going to hold the, fe the wire sticking out the tips of my left hand. I'm right-handed. Uh, so I'm using my left hand to hold the material. I'm going to pull the tail fibers back. Put the wire on my side of the hook shank and wrap that down. I'm going to wrap the tip down. Then I'm going to wrap back. Wrapping back, I'm going to hold the tail as well as the wire and wrap everything back to the bend of the hook to where the tail starts. Wrap that down secure. Sometimes that hook point gets in your way. So everything's tied in right at the tail. Now I'm going to wrap the, the stem part of the pheasant tail forward, and that's going to be my abdomen. Wrap that forward. My right hand does most of the work. My left hand kind of hangs out underneath the, the hook. Jam those wraps one right in front of the other until you get to about mid-shank or slightly forward. Hold that material up and forward. This is what I call a drop technique. I'm just going to grab the uh, bobbin, wrap it crossing the material, and set it down on the other side. I don't really drop it. I'm going to pull it tight. And that's three or four times there. That should be secure. This 12 aught's nice. You can wrap several times over the material, locking it down without bulking it up. I'm going to come in there and trim off the end of the pheasant tail that we don't need. Wrap that down secure. Then I'm going to rib it with the copper wire. You want to be careful, sometimes this can cut the wire. So I'm going to wrap that. Just make ribs. You're not, you're not making a copper john here. So this is just going to be segmentation. So keep the segments definite and uh, spread apart. So three or four wraps of wire will do it. Drop, do the same drop technique, grab the wire, wiggle it, break the wire off. Now I'm going to tie in the wing case and legs. I'm going to use this pheasant tail again, another piece. Um, do the same setup as far as pulling the fibers perpendicular to the stem to even the tips up to pull them off. I'm going to use a little bit more than I used on the tail, maybe half again or twice the amount that you used for the tail. So in this case, yay, about that much. Pull them all perpendicular to even up the tips. 
Grab those in the middle, just like I did the tail. Rip them off. This time, the, the tips of the pheasant tail are going to be pointing out towards the eye of the hook. And when you're first doing this, you might want to tie in longer legs than you will after you get good at it. It gets a little tricky when they're real short. So I'm going to tie this in just shy of a hook shank length long. Move that to move my thread forward to right behind the bead. Do a little pinch wrap or careful wrap. It's spun around, but that's okay because I'm going to pull that back up on top. Pull those back up so they're on top. And they should flare out which will actually be helpful because we have to split these to make the legs on each side. So they, it's splayed out like some bad hairdo uh, from the 80s. And there you go. And we're going to wrap this part back. This part becomes our wing case now. So you kind of do the legs and wing case in one step. Pretty handy. I'm going to wrap forward again to make sure I've got all these secure. And you want to you know, tie it right up tight to the bead and they're not moving so that's a good sign. The thorax is peacock curl. In this case it's strung peacock curl in a bag uh, which is pretty easy to work with. can be a little messy at times but I'm gonna grab about three strands of peacock curl. Hold the peacock curl like I'm writing with a pen in my left hand. And then I'm going to trim off all that stem part, all that uh, base part that doesn't have all the green shiny fluff. So I've got just a little bit sticking out the tips of my finger, maybe a, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. I'm going to put that on my side of the hook shank. This is similar to how we tied in the wire. Put that on my side of the hook shank with the tips behind the bead. Then when I wrap it just traps it right on the side of the hook shank. Tie that in nice and securely. Wrap that back all the way back to where the wing case starts. Move your thread forward. Now I'm going to wrap the peacock curl filling in the space for the abdomen. And similar to the pheasant tail, my right hand does most of the work. My left hand just hangs out under the vise and waits for uh, my right hand to bring the material to it. So now I made a few wraps underneath there. I'm going to hold the material towards me, slightly up and slightly towards the bead. And that allow me to do that same drop technique, trapping that material against the hook shank. I'm going to pull a little bit. There's one wrap. You want to be careful of the legs there. Two wraps ought to do it. You can see that stuff wants to fold back because it's thick. I'm going to carefully, I'm going to use the rotary to do this. A little surgical cut. I'm going to make another wrap through there to make sure I don't lose it. Now I've got the, the bad hairdo that we're going to split to make the legs for each side and we're going to fold the wing case forward and make the wing case. So just guesstimate it, grab half and half. I don't really count, I just eyeball it. And it's okay if one side has more legs than the other. I don't think the fish count each side count all the legs on each side before they take the fly. Maybe they do. Maybe that's why I don't catch fish sometimes. But We just want the impression of legs. So there they are. They're split out to each side. Now I'm going to take my wing case, fold it right between where we separated the legs, and I'm going to uh, pull that forward. With my left hand, I'm going to pull down and back on the legs to pull them into position. I'm pulling forward on the wing case to keep it tight. Now I'm going to do a pinch wrap right behind the bead and I'm going to pull the wing case up, pull down on the thread to pull it tight. Another wrap, same thing, pull it tight. If it rotates, just rotate it back. We still haven't locked everything in yet, but we're getting to that stage. So each wrap, I'm pulling it tight, trying to make this as secure as possible. I'd like to catch more than one fish with this fly, so tie it securely. And now I'm going to come in there and trim off the wing case as close as I can. And we're almost there. I'm going to wrap a few times right there behind the bead and do my whip finish. And 
And head cement's a good idea. I'm not going to show you that on this video, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Just put a little drop of glue right on the thread behind the bead and it shouldn't fall apart. There we go. A bead head pheasant tail ready to fish.